Alright guys, how's it going? So everybody's creating these really nice procedural textures for November and here's me making a basic metallic surface. <laughs> now generally I render in Octane, so moving over to things like Eevee and Cycles, it's always good fun. And you always need a metallic surface, let's be honest here, there's always something shiny. <laughs> so this is a very basic material. It's old school, it's traditional, and it looks great, to be honest. So first of all, let's sign a new material to our object. Let's zoom in a little bit here. And I'm going to put the metallic up just a little bit, just for a visual representation. So I'll make this 0 0.7. I'll spank the specular up to about the same. And I'm going to change the base colour here, and I'm going to make it slightly darker. Now the first node that I really need to drop down is a Veroni texture. Or Veroni, I cannot say the word. So I'm going to press Shift and A, I'll press S to search, and I'll search for Veroni. Now what I can do here is, I can take the colour and I can plug this into the normal map, and it'll give me a nice visual representation. Now I can change the scale just a little bit, and I'll just make this something like 7. Now obviously this is not the best method to take a colour input and plug it straight into the normal. It's not ideal, what you really need to do is drop down a bump map. But the first thing I'm going to drop down is a colour ramp node. Now, just so you're aware, I'm actually using the node tabber add-on, so it means I can press tab, and I'll just search for colour ramp, it just saves me saying, shift A, shift A. So we'll use the colour ramp, then I'll drop down a bump map, and I'll actually take the colour value and I'll plug this into the height, rather than the normal, and we get this cool pattern. Now what we can do here is we can play around with the strength, so I'm going to put this pretty low, something like 0 0.2 should do for the now, that should be perfectly fine. And that's us moving on to the next stage. Now I want to control the roughness value. So the best way to do this, I believe, is dropping down something like a noise texture. And obviously the good old colour ramp will come in handy here as well. Means we can squeeze the values. I'll take the colour from here, I'll plug this into the factor. And then I'll take the colour and plug this into the roughness. And this means when I squeeze the white value, you can see that it becomes much more splotchier. Now I can play around with the scale here. I'm going to put the scale up pretty high, so maybe something like 27. And now we start to get this kind of splotching effect. And obviously the detail is good, so we can maybe make this something like 9. And we'll put the roughness up just for a laugh. So you can see here by just pulling the black values in, we can get this nice metallic roughness and it's nice and splotchy. Now I'm going to control the metallic surface just with a colour ramp. Nice and easy to be honest. So I can actually take this node, Control c Control v and I'll paste it in. And I'll take the colour of this and I'll plug this into the metallic. So if I pull the white value in, you can see here it becomes a little bit more reflective. Now, I'm not entirely happy with the way this bump mark looks. So the best thing I can do here is, is I can add in a noise texture. I can take the colour from the noise texture and I can plug this into the vector. And what I can do here is I can play around with the scale a little bit. And you'll notice that it kind of creates this swirly pattern now, which is pretty cool. But I'm going to generate a mapping node and a texture node onto this, just to give me a little bit more control. So I'll add in a texture coordinate. I'll add in a mapping node. I'll generate from the object. I'll plug this into the vector. I'll then take the vector and plug this into the noise texture. And what I can do now is I can actually control the scale here. Now it looks nothing like metallic at the moment, but check this out when I start pushing the scale up. So I'll put the scale to something like 9. I'll put the detail level pretty high, so I'll make this maybe 11. And what I can do here is I can push the roughness up of the object. And now I start to get this kind of nice warm metallic surface. Now obviously I can control the bump at the original stage, so if I actually drop this down a little bit, we end up with something like a cannonball texture. And that's pretty much the basics of it. You just use a noise texture to generate the noise. Use a colour ramp so you can control the values. Obviously this goes into a bump map. In terms of the noise here, we can make it more splotchy. We can control the roughness of the material, so if you want this kind of nice glaze look, that's pretty cool. Or you can push it up to something like this. And then obviously you have the metallic surface, so if you don't want it completely metallic. And that is pretty much it. It's a nice material. Save it for later on. It definitely will come in handy, especially if you're doing mechanical things, stuff like this. Do me a favour guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter, enjoy November, remember, take care.